Welcome back to First Chapter Friday. Today, we will be reading Hello Universe by Aaron and Trotta Kelly. Chapter 1. Grand Failure. Eleven-year-old Virgil Salinas already regretted the rest of middle school, and he'd only just finished sixth grade. He imagined all those years stretching ahead of him like a long line of hurdles, each of them getting taller, thicker, and heavier, and him standing in front of them on his weak and skinny legs. He was no good at hurdles. He'd found this out the hard way, in gym class, where he was the smallest, most forgettable, and always picked last. All things considered, he should have been happy on the last day of school. The year was over. He should have been skipping home, ready to tackle the bright summer ahead. Instead, he walked through the front door like a defeated athlete, head low, shoulders hunched, and a sack of disappointment sitting on his chest like an anvil. Because today, it was official. He was a grand failure. Oi, Virgilio, said his grandmother, his Lola, when he came in. She didn't look up. She was in the kitchen, slicing a mango. Come take one of these. Your mother bought too many again. They were always on sale, so she buys ten. And what do we need ten mangoes for? They're not even from the Philippines. They're from Venezuela. Your mother bought ten Venezuelan mangoes. And for what? That woman would buy kisses from Judas if they were on sale. She shook her head. Virgil straightened his posture so Lola wouldn't suspect anything was wrong. He took a mango from the fruit bowl. Lola's eyebrows immediately scrunched together. Only they weren't really eyebrows because she'd plucked them clean. What's wrong? Why you have that look? She said. What look? Virgil said. You know. Lola didn't like to explain herself. Is that pug-faced boy at school being mean to you again? No, Lola. For once, that was the least of his worries. Everything's fine. Hmm, said Lola. She knew everything wasn't fine. She noticed everything about him. They had a secret kinship. It had been that way ever since the first day she'd come from the Philippines to live with them. On the morning she arrived, Virgil's parents and identical twin brothers immediately rushed her in a flood of hugs and hellos with the exception of Virgil. That's how the Salinas family was. Big personalities that bubbled over like pots of soup. Virgil felt like the unbuttered toast standing next to them. I sus. My first moments in America will be filled with a pulsing headache, Lola said. She pressed her fingertips to her temples and waved toward Virgil's older brothers, who were tall and lean and muscled, even then. Joselito. Julius. Fetch my bags, huh? I want to say hello to my youngest grandson. After Joselito and Julius scurried off, ever the helpful brothers, Virgil's parents presented him like a rare exhibit they didn't quite understand. This is Turtle, his mother said. That was their name for him, Turtle, because he wouldn't come out of his shell. Every time they said it, a piece of him broke. Lola had squatted in front of him and whispered, You are my favorite, Virgilio. Then she put her fingers to his lips and said, Don't tell your brothers. That was six years ago, and he knew he was still her favorite, even though she'd never said so again. He could trust Lola, and maybe one day he would confess his secret to her, the one that made him a grand failure. But not now, not today. Lola took the mango from him. Let me slice that for you, she said. Virgil stood next to her and watched. Lola was old and her fingers felt like paper, but she sliced mangoes like an artist. She started slowly, biding her time. You know, she began, I had a dream about the stone boy again last night. She'd been dreaming about the stone boy for days now. The dream was always the same. A shy boy, not unlike Virgil, gets terribly lonely, takes a walk in the forest, and begs a rock to eat him. The biggest stone opens its gravelly mouth, and the boy jumps inside, never to be seen again. When his parents find the stone, there is nothing they can do. 
Virgil wasn't sure how hard his parents would try to get him out anyway, but he knew Lola would hand chisel that rock to pieces if she had to. I promise not to jump into any rocks, Virgil said. I know there's something going on with you. Anak, you have the face of Frederico the Sorrowful. Who is Frederico the Sorrowful? He was a boy king who was sad all the time. But he didn't want anyone to know he was sad because he wanted people to think he was a strong king. But one day, he couldn't hold in his sorrows anymore. It all came out just like a fountain. She lifted her hands into the air to mimic splashing water, still holding the paring knife in one of them. He wept and wept until the whole land flooded and all the islands drifted away from each other. He wound up trapped on an island, all alone, until a crocodile came and ate him. She handed a beautiful slice of mango to Virgil. Here. Virgil took it. Lola, can I ask you a question? If you ever have a question, ask it. How come so many of your stories have boys getting eaten by stuff, like rocks or crocodiles? Not all of them are about boys getting eaten. Sometimes it's girls. Lola tossed the knife into the sink and raised her non-eyebrows. If you decide to talk, you come find your Lola. Don't burst like a fountain and float away. Okay, Virgil said. I'm going to my room to check on Gulliver. Make sure he's okay. Gulliver, his pet guinea pig, was always happy to see him. He would chirp as soon as Virgil opened the door. He knew it. Maybe he wouldn't feel like such a failure then. Why wouldn't he be okay? Lola called out as Virgil walked toward his room. Guinea pigs can't get in much trouble. A knack. Virgil could hear her laughing as he placed the mango between his teeth. And that concludes the first chapter of Hello Universe by Aaron and Trotta Kelly. Thanks for listening.